How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be using geometry nodes to make a really cool sci-fi large scale environment. We're going to be animating it using Eevee. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of 200 ready to use procedural materials compatible with both Eevee and Cycles. Speeding up your workflow is important and with an easy system to apply and edit materials, you will be able to bring your renders to life a lot quicker. Change the roughness, details, and color of any material you want. There is a growing list of categories like wood materials, detailed paints, and some really awesome metallic materials. They are 100% procedural so everything is editable giving you control of how you want your design to look all updates are free upon purchasing so head over to ducky3d.com and check it out all right so just clear out everything out of your scene here and let's hop over here to the camera icon make sure you're in the ev render engine let's turn on ambient occlusion bloom motion blur screen space reflections Within the screen space reflections, turn off half reg trace, bring your trace precision all the way up. And then right here at the bottom, make sure your color management is at filmic and your look at high contrast. So that's gonna be kind of the aesthetic settings we need to deal with here. Um, here in your preferences, go to edit preferences, make sure in your animation, your default interpolation is set to linear. So like I said, all geometry nodes. So let's go ahead and just put a plane in. That's the only amount of geometry we're gonna need really, except for this cube. So let's also get a cube, and then hit G and move it out of the way, out of the view. We're gonna use that in a little bit. Let's go here into geometry nodes and I'm gonna just close this window. And then I'm gonna click new and just go ahead and delete that input. And we're gonna go ahead and get a primitive cube. Let's plug this right here into the geometry. Now, now for me, when I initially made the design, my vertices are at 27. So I'm gonna click and drag, and then do 27 on my vertices. And then we can scale it up if we like. Maybe right there, just kind of eyeball it, whatever you want. Make it just a little bit bigger. And we're done there. Let's go ahead and add a displacement. So add modifier, displace, click new, right here on the little texture button. I'm gonna go here to clouds, really in a texture go I'm gonna go to depth of zero and then leave that there so let's go back here click on the geometry nodes I mean click on your uh, modifier section and we're gonna add another geometry nodes modifier so add that and then here we're gonna do instance on points so instance on points plug it right there the instance is that cube we added um, in the beginning so let's go click and drag and we'll put it right there and we'll put the geometry into the instance portion. And there we go, we have all this craziness. Um, and we can play with our scale here by clicking and dragging and playing with the scale. But for me, they're all the same size cube and I'm not a fan of that. Uh, first off, let's make these a little bit bigger. And then uh, I am gonna go here to the displacement and just crank up my displacement scale. And that's how we're getting that really cool effect. It's pretty easy just to get this incredibly cool complex thing. But again, not a big fan of the one scale. So what we're gonna do is get a fun node called the random, random value. This is pretty useful and pretty uh, pretty often if you just add random things. So we're gonna get the volume, I mean, sorry, the value and plug that straight into the scale. And then now here on max, we're gonna bring that max down. So now we have minimum of basically zero, which I guess I'm gonna bring that up a little bit. And now we have a pretty large assortment of different scaled, different sized things. And we could also, if we want, get another one, get another random value here. And if you'd like to, you can put the value into the rotation as well and get some random rotation if you want to add that to your scene. Um, making it straight, straightforward does give a look and making it go randomly is also another look. So whatever you wanna do, add some chaos, add some randomness to your scene, you're certainly willing, I mean, you're certainly uh, you know, fine to do that. So I'm gonna go uh, on this cube here, I'm just gonna hit H to move it from the scene. So we kinda of have the basic setup here that we wanna have. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit H on this model to move it from the scene really quick. We're gonna set up our camera. So let's go ahead and get a quick rig. So I'm gonna get a circle. I'm also going to get an, an empty. So right here, empty, plane axis. Last thing I'm gonna get is our camera. So this is a kind of three piece 
rig I've done a few times here on the channel. So here with the camera, we're gonna click on constraints right here, add constraint, follow path, and we're gonna pick that Bezier circle. And then we can kind of scale it out. The issue is dealing with this camera. So the easiest way for me is getting another constraint and adding a track two, and then right here on that target, click that empty. So wherever this empty is placed, that's where that camera is gonna point. Uh, because when you use this, it's a little annoying and you can kind of move things around and have a lot of fun with that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and bring that plane back and then um, I'm gonna scale this out and then maybe bring this up. I'm gonna hit zero to go to my camera view. Now, here's how you give the illusion of a large scale environment. First, I'm gonna click on my camera here on the follow path. I'm just gonna move it to maybe right here on the Bezier circle. I'm gonna go and bring it higher up. So we're looking down at it like that and then scaling it. So like I said, there is a trick to making the perception of a large scale environment and that's gonna be with your focal length on the camera. So click on the camera, click on the focal length and here, give it 100. There we go. And then what we'll need to do is get that Bezier circle, scale it out, something like this. And then we'll go ahead and bring it up. And there we go. We now have a large scale looking environment. And then you can play with, your, play, play with your camera within the constraints to go around your scene. Now for me, I'd like a little bit more density on our uh, cubes. So you can just go ahead back here to geometry nodes and add more cubes. First off, I do want to get the cube here and put a bevel modifier on it. So I'm just gonna zoom in here and then add a bevel that's gonna bevel everything and then bring up those segments, right click, shade smooth. Now everything is smooth, but still I want more density. I want more of these, because that large scale environment, we do need to have more smaller pieces. So I'm gonna click on that first geometry nodes modifier and then just kind of bring that up until I like the amount. And then I'm gonna to go to the other one and subsequently give myself smaller cubes like this. All right, so now we're really not gonna see the, the beauty of this piece until we, start, until we start shading and lighting. So let's go over here, back to the layout, and let's go click on the camera, I mean, sorry, click on that cube, which I hid from the scene. I'm also gonna hit that camera icon. And then um, we'll go here to the material preview, go down here, click new, and then right here, we're gonna go here to metallic, and I'm gonna leave it bright like that for now. I have a feeling we're gonna to need to make it much darker in a little bit, but I'm not gonna to jump to that just quick, just yet. Now let's go here to the EV um, preview here, and I'm gonna add a light. So mesh, let's see, a light, point light, and I'm gonna put the point light right here for now. I don't wanna actually see it. I want it to be behind all the cubes, but not inside of the cubes. And to give my strength something like 2000. So it's gonna be really bright. Let's go ahead and make it a nice kind of vibrant red. And then to really make this scene start to come together, we're gonna to do two things. Get your world, so click on the world right here. Get your world down to black. And then here in the volume, go from none to principled volume. So, and then we'll just go ahead and bring that density all the way to zero and just kind of barely bring it in. And this is where we're gonna to need to get that point light to be drastically brighter. Okay, maybe 6,000 like that, and then just kind of play with it. So I'm gonna put it maybe here. I'm gonna hit Shift D and get another one and make that one a blue. And then we'll go back and add a lot more density to this scene. So we're gonna go back here to the geometry nodes, that first geometry node. So now that we kind of have the scene going in, lots of more density needs to happen. So something like this. Now we're getting a really, really interesting structure for our scene. And then what I did was added some more aesthetic uh, pieces to the scene. First off, you're gonna wanna save. So save as, and I'm gonna call this uh, new guy, save it. And then I'm gonna add a cube just going straight through here. So cube, I'm going to scale it out. So scale it out like here on the X axis. So first I wanna make it a lot smaller so you can see it moving right there. Make it a lot smaller and then just bring it really big. And then we'll put an emission material on it. So go to the materials, new, principled, emission. Make it blue. 
make it bright. So this is what's really just making this scene come together really nicely. And then I'll just go ahead and scale, manually scale it out again. There we go. And then I'm gonna hit Shift D on this guy and then rotate it by 90 degrees. I'm gonna get this cube here, making sure I'm selecting it correctly, hitting Shift D and then rotating it negative 90 here. So now we have this scene looking really good. These lights can be even brighter. So let's give it 10,000. There we go. Maybe move it out a little bit. And then this point light, of course, give it 10,000. Make them really bright. Okay, so now already just a super, super crazy looking scene. And if you wanna see how it looks when you animate it, click on the camera up here in the outliner, and then we'll go here to our constraints and just check out how cool that looks. That 100 millimeter focal length is, is really what makes this stand out. And I think one cool animation actually to add to your animation, tons of things you can do, which I will leave up to you in terms of how you wanna elevate this, is if you go here to geometry nodes, click on that second geometry node, here in the random value as you're going around your scene, you can rotate actually rotate your cubes very subtly within this random value. So moving it just around like that. So if you wanna do that as well, so I'll show you how to quickly loop this animation. So what you're gonna to wanna to do here is click on that camera again, and then on your offset, bring it to zero. So I guess I'm gonna do maybe 500 frames. I want this to be incredibly slow because that's also going to give you a sense of scale. If it's the camera's going really slowly, it means it's taking a lot of time to do a full circle around your scene, communicates a sense of scale, large scale. So if you do that, might not have even been a thousand on my original animation. So I'm going to go right down here, go back to frame zero, and then here in that camera again, click the offset, go all the way to the end and click one zero zero. That's going to give you a full full rotation. Yeah, it's still too fast. So I'd give it a thousand frames to double that. And now we are making something or we have made something really, really, really cool. And that's pretty much that scene. Again, you can go ahead. I'm going to leave this blank enough for you to add a bunch of other things that really suits your own personal artistic style. Um, and then I'm just going to click the render button to see how we're looking as a final image. So that's the final image we're looking at. Really cool. Um, looks really good, just base. I would even on this cube here, make that emission even stronger. It's gonna give you a really cool effect. So if I click the render button again, that's how we're looking here for this final piece. It's really easy to make things look really cool very quickly with a couple um, simple techniques like that scale button and playing with just a bunch of instances and geometry nodes. So it's really fun. This was fairly simple geometry node setup but you got something really cool very quickly. That's kind of the lesson. So yeah, there you go. Thank you guys for watching. Actually, oops, I didn't show you guys how to export. So if you wanna render, export this out, you'll either render it out as a PNG sequence and compile it yourself, or you can save where you want it to save. Go down here to PNG and go to FFmpeg video, encoding to MP4, medium quality, perceptually lossless, right up here, render, render animation, and you'll be good to go. So yeah. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned some stuff. Again, if you want to check out real-time materials, that is in the description. See you guys in the next tutorial.